All right, almost is not going to come on today. Oof. Yeah, almost is not going to come on today. Um, church run out of daily bread. Daily bread, so they haven't gotten new ones in for March, April, and May. So I had to use that handy app I told you guys about. But walking with God today and having my conversation with God. I got a few decisions to make here. Um, there's some people that just won't leave me alone. No matter how many times I'm telling them no. Uh, so God is, is guiding me on that. And he's given me, already given me a decision to give them. But today was a different type of day for Monday. Um, primarily... Primarily just kind of finding um, just listening to God, man, like, you know, listen to God and actually having conversations with him. Because I can attest, you know, I, I, I talk to God every day. And there are times when as a man, I get emotionally clogged up. Whereas I want to have a conversation with God, but nothing comes out because emotionally I'm holding something back. Emotionally, I'm stuck on something. And it's funny because uh, the day's daily bread is called, uh, it's titled A Call to Leave. So the story is pretty much um, a young woman who thought she'd marry her high school sweetheart, much like me. Um, when they broke up, she struggled with what to do with her life. She sensed God leading her to seminary, but in order to respond to God's call, she had to leave, which means move, in order to answer his call and um, follow in his word, you know, follow his path. And the scripture verse they used was Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. And it says, come follow me and I shall send you out to fish for people. So pretty much coming to Jesus means that you have to leave something behind. Uh, coming to Jesus, that you, it means that you have to leave something behind. It's, it's pretty much uh, the daily bread. And one of the questions down there said it was, how has, how have you been called to follow God? How has Jesus made a call for your life to come follow him and how how have you trusted what you left behind to him mm. and there's that taboo word that us as men um get caught up in we get caught up in uh, the taboo of trust and putting our faith in people and then we wonder why people uh you know then we wonder why people let us down because we trust in people you know um and when it comes to relationships um we want to trust people that are not close to us for some reason um you know when we've been say you know your friend for 20 years your friend has never let your friend has never led you down the wrong path well this new guy that you that you have in relations with he comes into the picture and overrides your friend because we want to put our trust in whatever shiny, whatever looks shiny, whatever the enemy, whatever the devil sends us is shiny. That's that new thing, you know, like, um, it's like this, you know, keys. <laughs> this is what we put our trust in. We put our trust in keys. Every time, every time the enemy or the devil comes out and he says, um, he says, well, you got a choice between this rusty old pen that, that may or may not work. This pen been been yours for 20 years. This pen been beside you through everything. You know. This pen been beside you through all the all the crap you done done. Then the devil comes up and says, Hey, I got a new ride for you. So we put our trust in the wrong things. I said that to say that we trust in God for so long. Just like this pen, we trust in God for so long. God leads us. He directs us. He gets us on the right path. He gets us back into his word. He gets us baptized, you know. He gets us back in there with him. And what do we do? 
You know, what do we do? We look out the window and we start saying, man, these keys, these keys start looking real shiny. These keys start looking real attractive. You know, so that call that God gave us, you know, for the past 20 years to leave behind and to follow him and to leave what we trust with him to take care of it. We just throw it away like it's trash. You know, we don't, we don't pray. We don't do anything about it. And then we go out though, what the devil's got in front of us, which is these shiny keys. You know, the devil will flash these keys in front of us. And next thing you know, we do away, we do away our blessing. You know, we do away what God gave us to go chase these shiny keys. And as soon as we throw away the blessing that God gave us, we don't put it in his care. We don't trust him with it. We throw it away like it's trash. And we grab on to these shiny keys. A year or two later, the devil sends somebody to throw your shiny keys into the river, into the lake, into the pond. And when the devil, um, and when the devil does that, when the devil sends someone to do that, everything is lost. You know, we think every single thing is lost. You know, we we don't have trust in nobody anymore. We don't even have common sense enough to, pr to to pray to God. But what God does is He reaches mm -hmm. back down mm -hmm. and He pulls out this shiny pen, the same old trusted pen that you've used for the past twenty years that has brought you nothing but faith and glory this is sorry god but you know in this metaphor this is this is the blessing that god blesses with for 20 years you know or for however long but um like i said when it comes to when it comes to the keys the devil brings keys into your life and you see all this stuff on here he brings you know he brings lust he brings sin he brings lust he brings pride Actually, pride is probably the biggest thing that we have. So we're going to hold on to pride, right? So he brings pride. He brings envy. He brings jealousy. And jealousy comes with a whole lot of different things. Each one of these sins comes with a whole lot of different things. But the devil gives us these keys right here. He gives us these keys. And when the devil's ready to send the next biggest thing, that's when he lets go of the keys so that God can throw these keys out and get all that crap out of your life. And give you back old reliable. Something that you threw away and didn't give it to God. But God knew that you were going to need it. So he kept it. He kept it. So he can give it back to you. And say come back to me. Because my burden is light. My, uh, my, my burden is easy. And my yoke is light. And the Bible talks about un unevenly yoked people. And the thing is that today people aren't un un aren't as unevenly yoked as they think they are. The problem with people today is pride, temptation, which social media floods us with, TV floods us with. It just continuously floods us with sins. It makes it makes us envious of the next person. It makes us envious of that interracial couple. It's like man. Why am I with her? Why am I married to her when all day on TV, I can go out and get a black woman, you know, or I can go out and get a Hispanic woman or I, I get on or, you know, every time you get on Facebook, there's always loose women everywhere on social media. When you get on social media, there's loose guys everywhere. There's loose guys in your, in your wife's DM. There's loose guys. There's loose women in your husband's DM. You know, there's loose women in every freaking way. There's loose guys every freaking way. And it's those shiny keys, those same shiny keys, you know, devil's dangling in front of you. Devil's like, hey, you can drive it. You can have it. You can have it. But this plain old simple pen that God blessed you with, this plain old simple pen that's done been reliable to you and sturdy, you will throw this out because guess what? Even though the devil's dangling these keys, guess what? He's going to give you all these friends. He's going to give you all these these friends, these drugs, he's going to give you alcohol. He's going to give you the club. He's going to give you this new fat bank account. 
He gonna give you all this right here. If you just forsake God and follow him. If you forsake God and give in to those sins. But the best thing, the best thing about God is that he gave us Jesus. He sent his only son so that our sins can be paid for with his blood. Yo, God is constantly talking to us. God is constantly walking with us. You know, Jesus is constantly there. The Holy Spirit is constantly there. You just got to reconnect with him. You got to find him and reconnect with him. So there's something else I got here yesterday. I know it's kind of all over the place because I, I really didn't have my daily walk, uh, my daily bread with me. And I've been kind of all over the place with, you know, with talking with God and just <laughs> trying to make sure I get everything taken care of. You know, one of the things um, we do have an issue with patience. As people that come into the flesh, we have issues with patience. Um, you know, I, I got a lot more patience than, than, than most people, clearly. But, um, you know, I was listening to a sermon the other day. And we got four keys. Kingdom keys to waiting. So the first one is. Don't worry while you wait. And it goes back to what I was saying the other day about Philippians 4, chapter 4, verse 6. Don't be worrisome while you wait. Work while you wait. Worship while you wait. So the first is don't worry while you wait. So when we worry, it deals with us. It deals with what we do to ourselves while we're waiting. The damage that we do to ourselves while we're uh, in waiting for God's blessing. Because God will, trust me, God will tell you, wait, be patient, be still. Mm -hmm. You know, God will sit, constantly send those messages to you. Sorry, think about when he gave me today. And the next one is don't be worrisome while you wait. And being worrisome while you wait deals with others because you'll worry others. You'll hurt others with your emotion, with your attitude. Your emotion tends to hurt others around you um, while you wait because you get anxious, you get worried, you get scared. Then you start doing stupid stuff that you that you have no business doing. The third one is work while you wait. Take advantage of the time while you're waiting for the blessing. Understand this while you while you're in waiting for this blessing, it's a process that God has to take you through. He has to build the characteristics that he needs you to have and that you're going to have either either way. He's going to build these characteristics in you. You know what you do in the time just depends on how long it takes him to build those characteristics in you. So work while you wait, work on yourself, get closer with God, learn to hear him better, learn to hear his voice, learn to have an actual conversation with him. Like I said, me, myself, when I talk to God, like sometimes I have that emotional block. Sometimes I have that emotional block with opening up sometimes about what I'm feeling. And I have to take the extra time to break down those walls with him, especially when I go to him in prayer. I have to take that time to break down those walls, man. And 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 really cry out to him because I'm holding something because I'm used to holding back those emotions, but I don't have to with God. I know that consciously, but subconsciously, I still have to break those walls down. And the last one is worship while you wait. And that one is particularly special to me. Um, you know, when I went to church Sunday. Oh my God, it was live. <laughs> it was live when I went to church on Sunday. I kid you not more live than it's, you know, than it's ever been. Granted, I haven't, you know, I haven't been in a little minute, you know, cause of some, uh, some things going on there. But when I went back, man, and, and guy had told me, uh, Saturday night, he's like, uh, he, I mean, he told me, he's like, yo, you gotta go. You gotta go. I was like, okay. You know, I'm like, yes, I will definitely be obedient. You want me to go there? Cool. Let me. I will go. I went there. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful service. And it was like, 
it, I don't know what it was about Sunday. I think it's because the I think it's because the because we got pastor and we had Reverend at our church. So when one isn't isn't there, the other one covers. You know, the Reverend got up there and everybody was like, God was literally in the house on Sunday. I mean, he's there every Sunday with me, but um, me and the deaconess, we we felt God in the house on Sunday. You know, Jesus was definitely there, touching everybody, worshiping and praising with us, man. And oh man, it, it, it was beautiful, man. And and the uh, the kids came on Sunday. They uh, they had Sunday church, and man, it was beautiful. And and I, I got a chance to meet some of these extraordinary kids, man. Just very humble. Ah oh, man, very beautiful service. So worshiping while you wait, because what happens? When we wait, we keep focusing on time. We keep focusing on the promise. We keep focusing on, is it here yet? Am I there yet? Am I at the end of my road? Am I at the promise yet? Ask yourself and ask God, God, what are you trying to take? What are you trying to build in me during this time? What are you trying to get me to understand? What do you what are you trying what are you trying to teach me? What are you trying to get me to learn at this time? Because the process, what we don't understand, what we don't know, it's a learning process. And it's a learning process, like I said, because God wants to build character in us. He wants to take us from um He wants to take us from unforgiveness into forgiveness. And I don't know if you guys have ever been in unforgiveness before. But it's a difficult mm -hmm. uh it's a difficult thing to, to to you know to wrangle. You know, getting out of unforgiveness. If you don't know, if you don't have the proper control over your emotions. And honestly, a lot of women don't. They really don't have control over their emotions. What man has done, man has allowed women and this is not a bash against women it's just because of the emotions that you guys don't really control your emotions as well as you should for the most part and this is guys too but what man has done what mankind has done and the courts has done is allowed women to be in a position of power as to where they act on emotion and and they have them banking it yes acting on emotion is the best thing for you and so what happens? Then the man acts on emotion, you know, and then nobody at that point, nobody's trusting the process. Nobody's trusting the process. Nobody's working the process. Nobody's worshiping in the process. Nobody's. Um, everybody's being worrisome and everybody's worrying while they wait. And then what happens then there is that God's plan goes from this, this straight line to all the way over here and then what could have been done in one year what could have been done in six months what could have been done in two years then it turns into about 20 years you know and then you got 20 years of crap to sort through <laughs> so you know that's something i'm working on don't worry while you wait. Don't be worrisome while you wait. And trust me, I get it. The flesh loves to war against the spirit. It loves to war against the God in you. It loves to war against the light in you. Why? That's his job. Because Eve got Adam to eat the fruit. So sin was introduced into everybody. And sin is in flesh. You know, so... The flesh loves the war against everybody, against the spirit. And that's what it's a constant battle of. That's what our decisions are. That's what our decisions are. Do I cheat and go with what my flesh wants? Do I stay faithful and go with what my spirit wants? Do I have McDonald's and go with what the flesh wants? Or do I have Burger King and go with what the spirit wants? So... But that's the video for today. I know it's all over the place. I hope I know 
I, I pray somebody got got the message out of this. It was definitely a message. I I really wish I would have recorded myself yesterday, but I don't do it on Sundays because that's you know that's that's God's day. And then I try also try to have a day of rest. And then I did one on Saturday when I you know when I normally rest. But so it was a it was a whole sermon yesterday. <laughs> it was a whole sermon yesterday that I had. But um. Thank you guys for tuning in, and, and it still turned out louder than what I thought it was going to be. But hey, when God works, He works. So thank you guys for tuning in, man. You guys, you know, ha definitely have a blessed night, man. Stay encouraged. Do not, and, and just remember, like, trust what you're leaving to God. Trust what you're leaving to God. Okay. And when he's finally able to get, when he's finally able to wrestle the keys out your hand that the devil gave to you and, and throw those away, because you don't need what, you don't need that. You don't need the devil gave you. He's going to give you back what he blessed you with all along. So thank you guys for watching, man. I definitely appreciate it. Even if you didn't watch it, you know, like I still appreciate it. And I definitely hope everybody stays blessed. Have a great night.